This is the byproduct of United States deliberately chosen public policy that is decimating a population uh, because we don't like these people. Uh, this is something that should not be done. Yes, I testified before the U.S. Commission on Human Rights a few years ago, and I called this policy the most systematic violation of human rights occurring on U.S. soil today, and I continue to believe that. And so not only is it a horrific violation of human rights, it's a humiliating violation of human rights. We talk about how we want to spread democracy in the world. We seem to want to spread it everywhere but at our own borders. It makes no difference how many fences you've put up or how many border patrol agents you had or how many helicopters. The only differences it's made are the terrible violations of human rights that have occurred and continue to occur on your watch. 4,600 documented deaths and probably twice that many actual fatalities is a lot of collateral damage. There is an argument that illegal immigration is a problem. I don't think it's a rational argument to suggest that the solution is, is draconian and should, and should be indifferent to human rights. I mean, it's more than one or two. It's not just an accident. It's something that is systematically going on. And more than that, it is something that we have the power to change. And that's why I think it's a humanitarian crisis. According to Border Patrol stati statistics, 330 people died in fiscal 2004. And that figure increased by 43 percent to 472 deaths in 2005. If the federal government were pursuing any other policy that systematically and predictably killed more than 500 people a year on U.S. soil, there would be congressional hearings. There would be demonstrations in the street. We don't have that about migrant fatalities at the border. Has any politician taken any leadership and stood up in the Congress of this country and said, this is wrong. Let us sit down and figure out a way that we can avoid these deaths. Our middle class is being destroyed. Our communities are not safe. Our social service infrastructure is collapsing. And yes, it has everything to do with illegal immigration. You can't continue to lay all the problems uh, uh, of this country, of our country, uh, at the feet of Mexico and at the feet of uh, uh, immigrants coming through the U.S.-Mexico border. When we got our record number of migrant deaths in 2001, when we doubled the prior year, 2002, and we doubled from, one to, from 75 deaths to 157 deaths, we thought, aha, somebody in Washington will pay attention to this. You know? If it's those people, those people who are dying at the border, well, they're not like us. One comedian says if there were uh, 300 Swedish hookers dying out here, we'd do something about it. What is the trend is to, uh, uh, to profile uh, people that look like me automatically as an illegal alien, and then that, be that begins the process. That's the profiling, that's the insidious part of what we're doing with immigration policy and the border, that we dehumanize a bunch of people. I think there is a, a, an element of racism uh, when when simply because uh, people are perceived to be different coming through, through Mexico. And they don't know that our citizenship has always been a second-class citizenship. And so that we can easily be seen as the other, as somebody else. And people from Mexico are definitely other. Majority of migrant deaths are caused by the extreme conditions, but almost half of the migrant fatalities are due to drowning in the All-American Canal. Like in that year we had 29 desert deaths, we had like 34 All-American Canal drowning deaths. It's horrible. All those bodies piled up at the drops. See, the All-American runs along the border, 
near Mexicali, okay? And this is roughly uh, it's 80 miles of canal, 80 miles. The new border fences along the California-Mexico border do not include the All-American Canal. Nearly 600 bodies have been recovered from the canal, mostly migrants from Mexico. The Department of Homeland Security is well aware of the drownings, but it appears the canal will be used as a deterrent for migrant crossing. For years, John and Laura have been trying to convince the Imperial Irrigation District, the managers of the canal, to make it safe and prevent the migrant drownings. The 65-year-old earthen canal is currently being lined with concrete to prevent seepage and save water for the ever-growing population in Southern California. The new concrete sides are steep and slick, which many believe will make the canal more lethal. John and Laura are concerned that migrant deaths will quickly increase and have been petitioning the Imperial Irrigation District to add the necessary safety features. It almost appears as if the canal is being used as a barrier itself, and I'm talking about the Lime Canal. So the this, this section of the canal is being used as a... As, 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 a, as a deterrent. Fence. As a deterrent. Well, I think here's where we feel somebody would have to explain that to me. Why a canal? What it is is uh, you get in here, uh, it's a one-way trip. The original design of the newly relined portion of the canal included safety features that were mandated by the federal government. Concrete ridges would be cast into the side slopes of the new canal lining, and this should reduce the risk of drowning, as well as warning signs in English and Spanish. They would be posted to warn people of the dangerous waters. To save money and make the water flow more quickly, the concrete safety ridges were never installed. The warning signs were posted. What we're doing is we're making something more treacherous, steeper sides, faster water. And I hope that uh, somewhere in our staff and in our board, they will find the strength to uh, demand that this canal be better than what we had before and not the one that they're continuing to build. The All-American crew, they actually, instead of spending money on safety features, they actually had a special machine made to scoop bodies. It's an extended boom with the cable to hook and, and pull the bodies out. Saving lives, yeah, it's important, but unfortunately it hasn't been important enough to vote for it. There's just not enough attention to it. Do you know why? Is a human life not a human life? Or is it less of a human life if it's an illegal immigrant? Okay, well, again, I think there's two parts to that. One is the political aspect. You know, this is an ag community. Uh, status quo is, you know, they're Mexican, so what? That's the ugly part. Really? Oh, yeah. And the other side is, it's not a priority for me. Lo que pasa es que las expectativas que creas por lo que ves con tus familiares, con tus vecinos que vienen de allá, la ropa, este, los coches, las camionetas, vamos, piensas que es muy sencillo ir y, y que en un tiempo muy corto vas a traer eso. Y por qué muchas veces no te dicen la verdad también quienes vienen de Estados Unidos, y no te dicen que son jornadas de 12, 14 horas. No, te dicen, ¿sabes qué? Yo ya tenía un carro así y así, una camioneta así y así, ganaba tanto la hora, ganaba... No se dice, oye, está difícil, no, está lo... No, o sea, si hablan puras grandezas, pues... Sí, la fantasía, para sí, promover la fantasía. Exactamente. ¿Y qué es más fácil? Pues creerlo, ¿no? Y ya la vas a esperar y, y nos vamos para allá. Aquí ganas 130 pesos, que son, ¿qué? 13 dólares. Y yo allá me puedo ganar 70, 80 dólares por el día. Creo que es la historia sí, más conmovedora que yo he escuchado. Se trata exactamente de una muchacha de Honduras, de la parte de Olancho, afroamericana, negra. Estuvo aquí varios días, estaba un poco enferma, muy acomedida, en la cocina, etc. Y un día nos dijo, ya me voy. Y a los 15 días me habla por teléfono. Me dice, padre, le agradezco por todo. Tuve unas que otras desaventuras en México, 
pero logré llegar al río Bravo, a Matamoros. Y en la noche pasamos unos cuantos. Y cuando me incorporé en el suelo americano, le dije, gracias, Señor, mi sueño se ha cumplido. Y de repente escucho una voz que me dice, levanta tus manos y volteate despacio. Era un agente de la migra. Me puso las esposas, me dijo, súbete a la camioneta. Y ahí la mujer al teléfono empieza a llorar. Dice, Dios me perdone y usted me perdone, padre, por lo que le voy a decir. Le dije, oficial, te pido un último favor. Saca tu pistola y mátame aquí, porque yo soy un fantasma andando. No hay para mí regreso. Deja que mis hijos allá en Honduras puedan decir, mamá murió en territorio americano. El oficial se quedó mirándome, padre, y luego me quitó las esposas y me dijo, mujer, no te he visto, vete, y le estoy hablando desde Chicago.